maybe this is a little bit of a weird intro, but um, yeah, I was at school today, at college, product design, and I had to present uh, a limb that I designed for one of the school assignments. Uh, and I just thought it would be a little bit cool when uh, I would get outside to film like the intro to the video that I also presented to you guys. So uh, it is snowing outside and Amsterdam kind of looks good when it's snowing outside. So I figured, fuck it. So uh, yeah, here goes the video of me explaining how to, uh, how this lamp came together. See you guys later. Hello, welcome to another video of this SVA Design YouTube channel. And today has been interesting. So um, today was the final day of a school project that I was working on and I basically had to design uh, a desk lamp kind of like the light source that I'm using right now for the video I'll show it in a picture in the screen right now um, and I had to redesign that lamp for um, a target group of 12 year old uh, boys in this case or maybe even girls but I just chose to go for boys because that was a little bit more um, you know easier and more relatable for me to work with so um, I had to give I had to give like a elevator pitch type of presentation for just five minutes but there would be a long elevator right but I had to do like a five minute pitch to kind of showcase um, the process that I went through from um, starting out with this design of a lamp to then go on to the design that I came up with so um, this was at 8 30 in the morning so I had to wake up at about 7 30 in the morning um, and I am really terrible in the morning. So I just decided that as soon as I was in class, I would just tell the teacher that I would go up first and uh, just to have it out of my system as fast as possible. And also at the same time, I don't really get um, a lot of anxiety or a lot of anxiousness just in front of uh, to present something to an audience or something. So, and also weren't that many people, maybe like 15 people in there. So, um, yeah. And uh, during my conversation about everything that I did for the lamp, I just kind of figured why not also record this and also put it on YouTube to showcase to you guys. And for this video, I'm going to do it a little bit different. Um, usually I kind of pull up the Soilerworks files and I'll show you guys in 3D, but uh, for the lamp, I kind of based a lot of my presentation on the lamp um, around these renders that I made. So I just figured why not go off of those. So. Um, kind of saves me a lot of time with the editing and everything to just uh, to not have to do the solar works and you guys still probably have the same amount of um, value in the video I guess I don't really think it will take away from the video not to do the solar works part um, because it is pretty obvious how everything works so with that being said um, this is the first picture of the lamp so you can just basically see the base of the platform you can see the two um, the suspension arms basically I don't know how to properly call it and then you have a lamp as well so from uh, the picture back again from the first lamp you can kind of see that the lamp is uh, made and designed to be pretty simple the mechanism doesn't really have any springs or anything to it it is really um, a very simple design the, the, the lamp was really designed to be as simple as possible to have as less components as possible and the whole thing is pretty much held together by the mechanism at least by like four to five bolts and it doesn't really take a lot more than that to, um, you know, to maneuver it into place and to also maintain its position once it is in the position that, the, uh, you know, the user wants it to be. So um, I didn't want to lose that essence. I want to maintain the simplicity of it. And I also um, maybe want to even make it a little bit more easy to use and also a little bit easier to put together because I am making it for a 12 year old uh, clientele base. So. Um, the couple of things that I did. First and foremost, um, there were a couple of safety concerns with this lamp design. Because it is built on a suspension uh, that is like, with almost like in a car with a double wishbone suspension, usually you do that to maintain angles and everything so that when you're trying to move something up, it kind of stays in this direction instead of turning with it. So this doesn't, it, I don't know how to explain it, but this stays in this direction some sort of way instead of trying to turn and everything. So. That is uh, kind of handy for a lamp design like this because you can move things forward without getting the angles crossed up. But um, with a double wishbone suspension type of situation setup that is here, your fingers can kind of get cut between uh, the suspension arms, between the arms that are carrying everything. And um, that is something that you kind of want to prevent, especially for 12 year, old, 12 year old kids that maybe don't really get um, the, how to grab it and don't really take a lot of that type of stuff into consideration. So that is 
one of the things that I wanted to alter. So what I did was I just made it with one suspension arm. So um, in this case, it will be a little bit more difficult to maneuver it because the angles don't really stay the same and it kind of uh, can move in all different directions um, that it couldn't do if it would have like two suspension arms. But at the same token, you simplify the process of putting it together as well. And also um, just the overall usability kind of gets um, not really any better, but simpler, I guess. So that was one thing that I wanted to add. So here we have another detailed shot of the base of the lamp. So what you can see here is that there is like an aluminum uh, base plate that is what we made out of solid aluminum. And um, the way that I would produce it was probably with some forges, uh, just like car, how car rims are made. Would be a little bit expensive because you have to have like a billet cylinder of aluminum, heat it up, press it into the shape that you uh, desire. And then afterwards you have to, have to drill some holes in it as well. But um, this port that you can see right here is to actually also give the lamp the possibility to be mounted toward uh, a desk so you could flip it around to, uh, flip it up 90 degrees put it on the desk and bolt it and this hole right here would be um you know the port where a bolt would actually be able to come through and to push it against the uh, desk without yeah, having the possibility to fall off so that is the first thing you see here and once you flip it 90 degrees you can see that this hole right here where uh, the base of the lamp kind of gets started and also this is like a pivot point so that the lamp can also turn it in 360 degrees you can kind of take it out and put it in this hole right here and I think that will be a little bit better visible here so that you can see that this is the hole and that would eventually look like this so that is how it is set up against um, you know a desk situation so you can depending on what you want to do with it you can lock it against the desk or you can just put it stationary and um, you can also then later on move it freely so uh, that was something that to me was very important so here we have another shot of the overall lamp design so one of the things that I thought were very important and it were also some one of the things that were in my assignment because you have to set up um, a couple of uh, boundaries and I don't know what the proper English word for that is, but you have to set certain regulations for yourself that you just have to, uh, you know, certain requirements that you have to meet uh, in, in your design. So certain wishes and certain requirements. I think that was, would be the best way to put it. And one of the things that I wanted to do was that the lamp would be capable of maintaining its position um, in whatever place and whatever um, variation you would put it in. So let's say you would stretch the lamp out completely and you would lay it out flat. It shouldn't have the possibility to fall over uh, whenever that uh, is the case. So one of the ways of reaching that is to make the base uh, much heavier than the rest of the components so that the center of gravity, the center of mass always is uh, on top of the surface area right here, on top of the base. And if this is the case, it won't ever fall over because the weight is not signif significant enough to actually pull it off of its course because the center of mass is still on top of the base itself. I don't know if that makes any sense but um that is just so <laughs> what it just boils down to is that the lamp won't ever be able to fall over even if you extend it to its maximum output or whatever so um that was one of the requirements that i put up for myself to have in the lamp design so here we go for the lamp itself so in this render we can kind of see that i made the lamp out of carbon fiber i just wanted to showcase like um the multiple different things that you could do variations and everything with design and um, in the actuality, I don't think it would be in carbon fiber. I actually designed the whole lamp to be out of aluminum. And, um, you know, with, with the aluminum, you can also still maintain all of the weight and everything that I want to keep. So that is uh, one of the things. But um, the light source itself would be from LED strips, from LED strips. And, uh, you know, this can be, um, you can adjust how sharp the light is. Not how sharp, but how bright, I should say. You can uh, adjust the color as well, so that would all be, you know, these LEDs are very easily programmable and you can do a lot of stuff with it and all of that. So, um, also you can see that there's a glass plate in front of it and this glass plate is now frosted, but if this would be an actual product that I would launch, I would actually come up with different variations of a texture that you could apply to this film right here. Because the lamp is also meant to be a light source for camera activities. 
one of the 12 year old kids that I did my um, research with, my development research to come up with this concept, said that he also had his own YouTube channel and that he wanted to have a better light source for his video activities and everything. So um, I figured that would also be a cool thing to do for um, the light itself. So that I would add something that you would be able to, uh, just like the situation that I'm in right now, I'm sitting on a sofa and um, I would be able to kind of take the lamp and put it around my camera to have a light source instead of having a light source here and a light source here. So um, that would be better for the video. So I figured uh, if I put a hole in there, I would be able to maintain, I would be able to, um, you know, put add value to the product for that type of demographic, but um, still maintain, don't take anything away from any people that don't really want to use it. To so still maintain its functionality as a regular lamp without um but also to add value for the people that want to use it as camera light source if that makes sense i hope it does so um that was another thing that i took into consideration so um this picture right here was pretty significant to me when i made it and when i kind of finally saw the final result of how everything looked so um with the beginning of this lamp as i stated i wanted to make it as simple as possible so i kind of figured out a way to uh, maintain the same mechanism but to simplify it to the way that I kind of want it to be. So instead of, um, and now I found a way to make the whole system with just three bolts. And these three bolts are, I don't know what this, these are called, but they're already exist. It's not something that I invented or anything, but um, they have these turning handles on them. And um, what made them so significant to me was that I found a new way for myself to find um, a little bit of inspiration, I guess. So, um, I started to design for a specific target group instead of designing for myself. And with the specific target group of 12 year old boys, I really wanted to make a lamp that um, they could get a box of it with just the loose components and they would be able to put it together themselves without any parental advisory or anything. Um, and they would just be able to make it themselves, put it together and it would be done. So that was something that I really tried to accomplish. And I think with this lamp design, with the mechanism that I made for it, um, I also kind of found a way to put the art into the things that uh, make a product more usable for a certain target audience. And I guess that is a very powerful sentence for me as a designer, just for myself. So um, these bolts are kind of the, and this mechanism is kind of the solution for a problem for the target audience to make it more simple and make it better for them to use. But it's also the kind of the point that uh, the, the audience will touch. So the things that you're really interacting with on this lamp, I really wanted to make sure that um, those are the things that are stand out that just look like jewelry, some sort of jewelry of some sort, you know. So that's why I kind of looked at the, um, this render and I was kind of amazed with myself like that I was able to create something for a target audience and to actually put the art into the thing that uh, turns the regular object into something that is more for that specific target audience and um, to make it more usable and, and to enjoy it more. So, um, yeah, I think that is a good way to summarize it, I guess. But what this actually does, because it is bigger and what it actually means that it is better for the target audience to use, is that because it is bigger than a usual uh, turning knob, because this one will be like seven centimeters uh, wide so you can put a lot of torque on it without putting a lot of force on it so because of the moment arm and everything if you um you know if you know a little bit about you know math and everything you don't really have to put a lot of force on it to actually maintain a, a bigger moment to put more pressure on the plates to work the mechanism um and if you are 12 or if you are either maybe 80 years old and you don't really have a lot of force in your hands to do these type of things or you don't really uh you can't really grab onto small things very properly or all of those things uh this kind of stuff kind of makes it easier for a larger a, a bigger amount of people to still be able to maintain um yeah i don't know a level of um independence i would say with objects like this so you can put it together yourself you can operate it yourself and it's just I don't know how to put it. I guess that is the best way for me to, um, yeah, to kind of summarize everything. 
to put the art and to put uh, more effort into the things that are really come in contact with in a product that um, it kind of feels special every time you touch it is uh, something that I will really take away from this design challenge and this, this design brief um, that I had to do for school. So that is something just for myself, I guess. So thanks for watching another video of this SPA The Time YouTube channel. Um, this was like the lamp design that I had in mind. Please get into the comment section to let me know what you guys' thoughts are on not just the lamp, but also um, this whole journey that I'm on. Uh, but also for the lamp in particular, just let me know in the comment section as well what you think about it, what I should still add to it, what I should subtra subtract from it. And um, also leave a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't yet. And I hope to see you guys in another video. My name is Shaquille Feldman from SV Design and I'm out.